there are things that are near and dear to our hearts, things that remind us of childhood and things that are things that make us happy. This next episode is going to take you to my happy place, and it's going to make a lot of you vegans out there really happy. See you for Ina Gabanadina. I've had a few friends and family ask me to do vegan dishes. And I'll be honest, um, when you try to do a vegan dish, sometimes it's just not that exciting, it's not that sexy because you're trying desperately to use purely natural ingredients and there's only so many different flavors. But here's what I'm gonna tell you. With a little bit of training and a little bit of, of experience, you can create some dishes that are so amazing you won't even know that they're vegan or, or you won't even feel like you're trying to be healthy. In this case, this episode, I'm gonna share one of my family's favorite recipes. It's called Gabinadina, which is an eggplant and zucchini stew. Uh, it's, a, it's basically a farmer's stew, completely vegetarian, made with just a little bit of, of tomato sauce to, to give it some color and some sweetness. But I'm gonna tell you, it's quick, it's inexpensive, and the thing that makes it the best is that it lasts for about four or five days. So, are you ready for some fun? So for gabanadina, you're gonna need a few ingredients. You're gonna need some onions, you're gonna need some celery, you're gonna need eggplant, zucchini, mushrooms, a little bit of fresh garlic, and then a little bit of an over-the-counter tomato sauce or your own tomato sauce. We're gonna start by sweating the celery and the onions together until they become soft and they start to caramelize a little bit. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through the prep of everything, and then we'll build the dish so that you can see. Are you ready? So we're gonna start with the onions, and we're gonna use the Chop, chop Wizard, the Vidalia Chop Wizard for this. So, like we always do, we cut off the top, we cut off the bottom, and we peel off the layers that we're not gonna use. Now, for the chop wizard to work best, it's always best to cut the onions in half and then turn them so that they're laying down flat. And we're just gonna cut them about the depth of the cut um, so that it comes into squares. You're looking at about a quarter to a third of an, an inch. When you take the chop wizard, all you're gonna do is put down a layer or two, depending on what you're comfortable with. And it'll cube quite nicely. You're gonna get a, a very, very cons a, a consistent dice. So we used two medium onions and we're getting pretty much a perfect amount for this recipe. And if you have a little bit left like this that's dry and, and bowing, it's all right to just throw that away. You don't have to use it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take now the perfectly diced onions and we're gonna put them in a bowl. Because what we're gonna do now is if this is a half a bowl, we're gonna fill the bowl with now chopped celery because we want the onions and the celery to be equal amounts. So we have a whole celery head right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just trim off the tops and we're gonna finely dice. Now we have about the right amount of celery here to mix with this. I'm gonna keep this and I'm gonna use this for celery sticks for another episode. When you have the celery, it's all right to dice it a little finer so that the pieces melt and cook faster. And then we're gonna put it in our container and we'll have our celery and our onions ready to go. So the next step is prepping our zucchini and our eggplant. Again, this is a really simple thing. 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the eggplant. You probably want smaller ones. They're usually younger and a little bit fresher. And what we're gonna do is just trim the top and the bottom. And then we're gonna slice. And we're gonna use about maybe, once again, about a third to a fourth of an inch. I used approximately four total zucchini um, to, to make the dish. I prepped some ahead of time to save us a little bit of time. And you want about equal amounts of zucchini and eggplant. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of the eggplant, pinch off the top, trim off the top, trim off the bottom. Now this is where the recipe is really a lifesaver. If you love eggplant parmesan, generally you're gonna find that there is a lot of work involved. You have to cut it just right, you have to trim it, you have to salt it, you have to press it overnight. For this dish, watch how easy this is. You take the eggplant, you cut it in half, you then cut it in half again, And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create julienne slices, long, thin stripes. And now all we're gonna do is we're gonna cube it. We're not gonna skin it. We're not gonna have to salt it or anything. Literally just cube it with the skin on. Now, eggplant is part of the nightshade family, um, which also includes peppers and, and some other, other vegetables. If you have arthritis or if you have um, joint pain, uh, nightshade vegetables can sometimes cause it to flare up. I will be honest, um, I love eggplant and I would never ask you to eat anything that's going to cause you abdominal upset or, or, or make you, you allergic. Some people have an allergy to eggplant. But in this case, this dish slow cooks it and a lot of the, the I, I wanna say acid that is usually found in eggplant, cooks out in the dish and it becomes very, very mellow. So if you're not a fan of eggplant, but you don't have any allergies to it, give it a try in this dish and see if, if you react better to it. So we've got the celery and the onions together, we've got the zucchini prepped, and we've got the eggplant prepped. All we need now is to prep the mushrooms. And for the mushrooms, it's really, really simple. All we're gonna do is trim the very, very edge of the cap, and then slice. And for the mushrooms, you probably only want to make about maybe four or five mushrooms throughout the dish because you're just wanting them to be seen and to kind of melt into the dish for flavor. So now that we have all of the ingredients prepped, what we're going to do is basically we're going to Add olive oil to the pan and we're going to turn it on on a medium to medium high heat. We're going to put a healthy amount of olive oil into the pan, enough to cover the bottom and give it a little bit of depth um, because you want the onions and the celery to be coated completely by the oil. So I would say maybe about six or seven tablespoons minimum, maybe up to a half a cup. Once it comes up to temperature, we're gonna add in the celery and the onions and we're gonna get the party started. Once we've got the celery and the onions cooking, it will be a very short period of time, maybe about five or six minutes before we add the zucchini. The zucchini will cook all the way through and start to melt out, turning the half moons into quarter moons before we add a little bit of seasoning and we add a little bit of salt and pepper. 
Right now what we're doing is we're actually just making sure that the onions and the celery are coated with the olive oil. I like to use fresh garlic in recipes, which can be a little time consuming and can be a little annoying. They do have uh, crushed and peeled garlic that you can buy uh, in the store. It will save you a bit of time, um, but I, to be honest, I prefer the flavor of fresh garlic. And I believe the health benefits are really found in fresh garlic as well. So we're gonna put about four or five cloves into this dish. Um, once the celery and the onions have started, sauteing, we'll add it then. You can rough chop it, dice it, you can mince it, you can press it through a, a, a garlic press if you'd like. The main thing is just get the garlic in there. Now that we've peeled the garlic, what we're gonna do is just rough chop it into diced pieces. If you mince it, um, the flavor will go through the dish much more thoroughly, but some people like rough, bigger pieces. However you like your garlic, you do it the way you like. With me, I like, I like to have it kind of minced fine for this dish. Once they are as tiny as they are for making garlic bread or the garlic compound butter, that's when I'm going to add it to the dish. But let's see how the celery and the onions are coming together. They're about four or five minutes away from being a nice, heavy sweat where they're tender. And now we're gonna add the garlic. All we're gonna do is we're now going to add the zucchini to the dish. We're gonna make sure that the zucchini is now coated with the oil and is absorbing some of the fluid from the celery and the onions. You need to be patient and give it just a little bit of time. It's gonna take between seven and 10 minutes for the zucchini to cook all the way through. It's gonna start getting tender uh, and you'll notice as it becomes more translucent. So now that the, the zucchini has been in for quite some time, um, it's starting to become translucent. The seeds are starting to melt out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add the Italian seasoning with a blend from McCormick's and we're gonna put in a generous amount. With the seasoning put in, you can see the herbs and the spices uh, throughout the dish. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add the eggplant to the dish. And then we're gonna fold that in so that it's completely coated with the celery, onions, and zucchini. Now, once again, you have to be patient. It's gonna be about probably 10 minutes to let that slow cook and absorb the flavors and the, the juices so that it's ready to add the mushrooms and then the final act of the red sauce. Now that the eggplant has been fully sauteed and it's coming together quite nicely, we can add the last bit, which is the mushrooms. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually just mix it together to allow the mushrooms to blend in. Mushrooms will cook down very, very quickly, so we can literally, within a minute, add the red sauce and then let it stew. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an over-the-counter red sauce. Ragu with extra chunky mushrooms is a perfect pair for this dish. All you have to do, literally, is open it, add the jar, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to the jar to get all of the sauce out, shake it, and put the extra moisture into the pot. Now that the sauce is in, you're gonna let it stew for about 20 to 30 minutes. What that does is it allows all the flavors of the vegetables and the herbs and the seasonings to blend together, to kind of sink into the entire dish and become soft. So the gabanadina is now done, and we're only at the point where it starts getting good. On the first day when it's done, you can eat it exactly the way it is. Uh, a vegetable dish, you can serve it literally on the side of an entree or as a main course, kind of a vegetarian stew by itself. If you are not vegan and you want a little bit, a sprinkling of fresh grated Parmesan cheese is always a beautiful addition. Now, the next day, if you have any left and you're interested, what you can do is you can put it into a pot 
much in the same way as the macaroni and zucchini. And you can add a little bit of water and boil pasta into it, making a rich and hearty vegetable and pasta dish that will make you very, very happy. Now, if there's anything left on the third day and you really want an incredible treat, all you have to do is take the, the gabanadina, heat it up, and take a hoagie roll. Cut open the, the hoagie roll, put down a little bit of provolone, stick it under the broiler for just a minute or two to melt the cheese and to toast the bread, and then put the hot gabanadina down. You'll have basically an eggplant parmesan sub that's hot and sure to satisfy. It was a pleasure serving you, and I hope you enjoyed this, this episode, and we'll see you again on Fresh Food Therapy.